Alrighty guys, this is probably a short little video on, since we've, uh, sorry, on puttying, uh, since we've pretty much got the frame done, uh, there's still a few little uh, minor technical things we have to go and do with it, uh, a few little adjustments. But in the meantime, we might as well get puttying on the body so that we're able to let it dry, putty, and then start sanding. So this is what I use. Uh, a lot of guys use other stuff. I like to use the automotive stuff. I find that this stuff actually uh, uh, attacks the plastic in a way that just kind of, it bonds with it. So this is what I've always been using. So before we prime it, and th this is the primer that I use. Uh, it's, it's not cheap primer, well in Canada it's about uh, almost $30 a can. And we might be using up to maybe uh, two to three cans of this primer. So you're looking at almost 100 bucks just in primer alone. So if some of you guys say, oh, how come my finishing is so expensive? Well, that's why, you know what I mean? And that's not including the paint or the putty. So here, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just grab my putty knife and I'll just go along all of my seams. Anywhere. Anywhere that's going to, lot, sometimes I'll use my finger. I find that it goes just as fast. I'll go all around. And it's pretty easy to sand this stuff. Okay. And that, this is when you pretty much finish all of your sanding. Looks like crap, but it's got to get worse before it gets better. One thing, guys, when you're going to do a putty like this, just make sure not to do your cracks that defines your door. Yeah, well, you can go over top of it, but I'll show you. Just make sure to clean them after. That's right. And then you might have to do, uh, you know, what you'll sand this, and then you might have to do another coat. The other thing, too, with these kinds of products, make sure you are in a ventilated place. Yes, unless you like We that are too. in the shop right here right now. We're more than fine. Because uh, some of these products here could uh, make you feel good. So you go all the way around. Just like that. Now a little bit of what Sean was saying earlier, uh, it's going to cost you a lot in primer and things like that. Yes, it is expensive, but the good products will give you a good uh, end finish. It's a little bit like painting real cars. Some paint will be more expensive than the other one. Some certain people would um, ask why it's more expensive. It's just a product they use. It's just a better product. I just use I use the the best product I could find to do all of my stuff. Use cheap products. Well, yeah, sometimes yeah, using cheap products will create you more issues. Now remember. On this type of stuff, it all depends on how much you want to put into it. If you put in a lot of work and a lot of effort, well, you'll get the results. But if you do a kind of a, a fast job, well, that's what you, you're going to end up with. Now, I pretty much put putty on all of my seams. It's a lot easier to sand it off after. And if you did create any divs or dents in your uh, styrene, you could fix it right now. I know I'm putting a lot on, but that's that's okay. You're removing probably 90% of this. You just 
just want to fill the cracks and all the little dents and all the little imperfections. Because this is scratch building, boys. Again, if you have any questions, make it scalerc at gmail.com. Kind of a messy process. If we have any in the audience uh, body men, <laughs> they'll understand this process. There's other products that they could use. Oh yeah, I just you could use Bondo. This I've, I've used Bondo. I personally don't recommend it. I find that the Bondo doesn't really stick to the plastic very well. Okay. So Bondo, I I don't use Bondo any any of my builds. It's either it's going to be it's going to be uh, putty, or it's going to be actual filler, as in glue I use sometimes I'll use the glue as a filler uh, it dries hard and it just it's just a good product to use as a filler I find anyway again guys these are all my experiences with all this stuff if you guys have other stuff that you use and you're comfortable with go for it use that we all have our products that we like to use Let us know in the comments if there's another product you guys use that works well. And if it's available in Canada, we'll, we'll try them out. So now I've covered it all up. All right. So now wipe that off. Um, now all the body, the seams, I just use a knife blade. I'll just go over it to make sure I don't lose any of the body lines. Like that. to redo. This is a good time now to figure out what exactly has to be done. There we go. Get all the body lines. You can go back later on, but I just find it easier as you go. This, this stuff, I usually leave it a couple of days to dry properly because I find if you don't, uh, it just really clogs up your, your sandpaper if you start sanding this thing without it being fully, fully cured. That's my experience anyway with this stuff. And I built it just a few bodies. So this is what, your second one? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> There you go. So that's that's how it looks. Not very pretty, but there we go. It sits there. There. And then We'll make a bumper for it. We'll hide all this stuff. I'll probably start my bumper right around here so everything's get hidden and you won't even notice that. Got a little spot here.
and get yourself one of these the little finger brushes, finger sanders, sanders. I get these at uh, the, the Velcro. I get this at the Lowe's, and they're perfect. Uh, when you start sanding, you want something, you don't want to use your hands too, too much because you'll just follow the contours and you won't, uh, you won't get any of, the, uh, in, any of the imperfections out. So this way, everything stays nice and straight. You get a, a, a real nice finish. Okay, thanks guys. See you in the next video.